but we'll wedge it. You can see I'm out now, but I just got a bunch more clay um, today. So that's exciting. I don't like to keep the boxes around. The boxes drive me crazy. So in the meantime, look, there's no more plants in our little wet box. Ow, I hit the, the camera, but that's okay. Okay, and so here we are going down on top of it. And here, I'll switch to um, camera B. Look at that, so you guys can see my, what I'm doing a little bit better. Here, does this, does that look at, like it's in focus? Hold on, let me check this real quick. Yeah, it looks okay. Oh yeah, you can see the cat. The cat this whole time, guys, had a knife. <laughs> he had a knife. Sorry, guys. The cat had a knife. I wanted that to be a little bit of a secret, but you guys gotta see the... I, thought good, I think it's kind of funny, like, people join like, oh, this cute cat in the back. And then all of a sudden it's just like this demon cat with a knife. Imagine this is like the sun, right? And imagine there's a horizon on there, right? You see how you can only see that like little top of that, that circle there? That's what your hand is pushing, is pushing on that circle while you take your other hand here, your fist, right? And it's like a chainsaw, rip, rip. But you're being pretty slow with it actually. And so you're bringing that along your hand towards the end of your palm and if you're slow and if your hand is sturdy usually you can get it pretty much centered I mean that's definitely within tolerance of throwing but camera B there we go so now we're ready and I'm gonna bring out the little you guys ever see happy llama sad llama happy llama so you bring out your happy llama he's biting right on this edge here right and happy oh somebody said something do you work with kids? You've got a lot of good references associated with throwing posture. <laughs> I do. I do work with. I work with all all age groups. You know, it's funny. The I feel like the kids they don't really like my references. I feel like they think they're like weird. But the adults actually <laughs> like my references more. But you have your little happy llama, and then you're just bringing that happy llama up to make your volcano, right? Helps out quite a bit. Uh, in this part, I'm gonna take my knuckle here and now I'm gonna swap to, uh, hold on, camera C. There we go. And so you can see my knuckle, right, is going right on this bottom edge. I'm slowly pushing that in because this is all potential. We don't want to cut that all off, right? That's all potential right there. And we wanna get as much height out of this lump of clay as we can. So I'm bringing my knuckle and I'm pushing my interior finger along my knuckle. And this first pull, it's not about getting height, right? This first pull here, that's all about getting the clay equalized, right? If the clay is nice and equal, you're gonna be setting up yourself for some good pulls later on. Whatever is, you, whatever you're, I mean, we're not perfect humans for centering, right? And so whatever's off-centered, I push down and I start a new centered ring to bring up from the bottom here. And so I pop that out and I always say this little bump here is a gift. It's a gift from the clay. And it wants you to take that little gift all the way to the top of the pot here, right? And so you're right underneath that, and you just slowly carry that little gift up to the top. And the pot is so happy, you know? It just is, it's really, really cool. Oh, somebody else said something. What did they say? So cool, love your set. Oh, somebody said that a long time ago, I think. Thank you, whoever that was. You know, I'm just calling that up so it's more of like a steep volcano. And so the key to cylinders is just making a bunch of volcanoes and then slowly bringing that, that little hill at the bottom in. Create your little bump. And look at this, it's our friend. All right, and we gotta be pretty focused here. Very slow, right? And this is where you get to have the breath of your pole baked into the pots, right? All those little throwing lines that you see, that's all you just ba being baked into the pots there, right? A lot of people like to get rid of that stuff with like a wooden tool, not me. I like to show it off a little bit, right? That's me right there. Okay, somebody said something. Let's see what they said. How long have you been throwing? Are you an instructor? If so, how long have you been teaching? Oh, that's such a, that's a hard question. I've been throwing for, I've been throwing for five years. Um, but
but I have been like really throwing for three, right? The first two years, I feel like I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And so it was kind of me coping with how I didn't do drawing anymore. So I wanted to find something else. Um, and then how long have I been teaching? I've been teaching now for almost a year. Um, but I'm, I'm still working on it. I'm not the best teacher. I feel like I'm, I'm, more of, I'm more of a maker than I am a teacher right now. But I think sometimes a lot of people get teachers that aren't makers. And so I think I'm a good foil to that, that line of uh, teaching. I gotta really get in the rhythm here. I gotta feel my, my own beat. I gotta feel the rhythm of the clay. You gotta breathe. Whatever you do once the clay, if you want to exaggerate it, you got to emphasize. You got to give it a little bit of, a little bit of, you know. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to guide where I want it to collapse. Since it's thinner on the top, I'm going to push in these little angles here. So then I stretch that clay out, so it's more likely to want to collapse kind of more towards this middle area, right? Why don't you? Why don't I draw anymore? Ah, oh, such a sad story. <laughs> I don't draw anymore because. Uh, I don't know, I, I think when I first started, I went to art school, you know, and I wanted to be like an animator. I'm a big time video game player and I wanted to animate video games. And there was one day uh, when I went to go choose my major and I was looking at all the animation students and I was just like, dang, that's not for me, right? Here, we gotta slow down here. Little tree. Kind of twisted a little bit too tall still. That's okay, we don't want to bend it anymore. But I knew I just couldn't do it. I didn't have faith in myself at that point. I got a new, look at this, I got a new toy for us. All right, camera C, camera C. Look at this, I got a new, got a new toy. Because if you look at my old wire, it has like this freaking, look at that. Oh, can you guys see that? Look, it has a bend. It's so depressing. I hate the bend. And so, Today I was up getting new clay, and I was like, all right, you know what, I might as well get some new, uh, what is it called, a new little wire tool. I'll spoil myself with a new little, little mud tools wire tool. Look at that. What if I instantly bent it right away? But look at that. You can't even see it. It's like fishing line. So nice. I gotta get a good angle here, so I wanna go. Do I even wanna cut this one? This one doesn't even get a cut. I was so excited to bring the wire out, but I couldn't even cut it. So depressing. Oh well. This one gets a double bump in in out, right? In out, in out, in out, in out, in out, in out, in out. Alright. Camera B. So there's number one, guys. Here you go. Sweet. Let's go over here. And somebody said clay is really satisfying, though. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people, they think clay is, like, peaceful. But for me, like, clay is like an all-out war on the wheel, right? And it's like the most honest thing that you'll find in the world is, like, the battle that you have with clay, right? Like... You can't, when, you, when, a, when a pull is bad, it's, it's hard to gaslight yourself into thinking that it's like a, it's a good pull, you know? Where I think with a lot of other ways of making work, you know, there's some things that are very up to interpretation, so you can get away with a, a lot within your own practice, right? But I like to really be a little bit more like brutal with what is happening on the wheel. Because I think, I, I really think that it's more valuable to me when I, when I struggle to get a pot rather than when it just is, you know, happening. All right, push this down. And no go, like you don't want to start throwing while it's already off center. You want to get it kind of centered before you even start. Somebody said another thing. Amen to it, to its a satisfying battle. Yeah, for real. Does your cat have a knife? <laughs> yeah, he does got a knife. 
Look at him, dude. He's dangerous, bro. <laughs> you gotta watch out for this cat. Hold on, guys. I'll protect this from the cat. All right. Anyway, here we go. So I'm centering that, and this clay is so hard, right? It's and you can see it's wanting to actually rip instead of move, and so that's the problem with that clay. So what you're gonna want to do when the clay's hard, though, is you want to keep your hands kind of down at a 45 as you're getting up taller, because you want to almost. It's like you ever watch cars, and it's like you gotta go left to go right. In the same way, for clay, you gotta go. You gotta push down to go up, right? And so you can see my hands are kind of splayed downward to keep that kind of contained and Ooh. Oh. <laughs> so you can see when clay's hard it wants to rip and so I'm gonna do the sacrilegious thing where like if you did this your pottery teachers would be like no don't do it the air bubbles right but I'm just gonna smash that back on and I'm gonna go back down and push up I was getting a little bit too excited about the clay there Nice, there we go. All right, I gotta be chill. I'm trying to fill up the space on the screen with the, the wedging there, or the wheel wedging, the centering. Okay. Go up a little bit, and down a little bit, nice. For now, I'm just really trying to focus on getting my, my stuff together. Ooh, I gotta slow this down. A little bit too thin on the bottom there. You can see it getting wobbly. And as I'm getting closer to the top, you see I'm slowing down and I'm also increasing the like the like the over under, right? My S curve there. I'm really increasing how far I'm pushing out and how far I'm pushing in there. And that's what's getting me like a good pull, right? Uh, sometimes when you go lit up too much, I see it all the time, people will be very like, use their pads of their hands and they get to the top and then all of a sudden they're kicking the top off. You gotta be really nice and direct with it or else it's not gonna, you know, work out well. All right, getting in the breath. Okay, so we got a good five star here. Okay, and then we always want to emphasize, so I'm getting a little bit of water on my finger there and I'm pushing that in, I'm stressing out that clay. Nice, look at that. And so that way, I got a little bit more thickness in this middle part, so hopefully it does a good spiral here. We'll see in a second. I call this my spider pull, a little bit outward. Look at that. And then make sure we go very nice and slow on this top edge. Kiss that rim right there with your fingers. Look at that. So you can see it's starting to spin out. This one kind of almost looks like a UFO a little bit, right? But you can see like this form to me, it's like too, it's too uniform. The five is actually really nice, like especially from the interior. Hold on, let me see. Hold on. Jarvis, camera seat, camera seat. There we go. <laughs> All right, let me wipe my hands all over my pants and get my flashlight here. So you can see, <laughs> I got a flashlight. But do you see how it's like a nice, it's a nice like five star on the inside there. It's a good little vortex. I think that that's kind of cool. But again, if we go to camera B, camera B, you can see how it just looks numb. It looks like, looks a little bit lazy. It looks like it's half baked. You know, there's still some, there's still some added potential and that's where this bottom edge for me became a whole new avenue to play around with. All right, look at that, right? I think that that's just crazy. Hold on. We gotta, we gotta add a little bit of spice up in here. All right, guys, hold on one second. So the pottery demon Mosey's on over here. Sorry, I'm still a little bit transparent. I haven't had my, <laughs> enough to eat today, so I'm a little bit light, but you can see, look at this. This is my pot, that's my cat. That's not really my cat. But I like this, this middle section, it's okay. Like I said, this top section, it's a little bit numb. Feels still numb, but if we go down to the bottom here, like this is where the juice is at, guys. Like this, this for me, that changes the whole dynamic. An, an artist, Linda, uh, Linda Sanchez, right? She said, I was, I was like, wouldn't it be beautiful if you made like, like everything out of like gold, like you could work with a lot of gold. 
And she's like, no, 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 Noah. Like a one speck of gold in like a swarm of other things means something, right? One little speck can change depending on how much quantity there is, right? And so in the same way, I've been thinking a lot about, okay, well, if this feels a little bit numb, I can add something at the bottom to complete the pot, right? And so that's been how I've been kind of thinking about, oh, I gotta go off this way. <laughs> what is your thought about closing the form on the top? I've, I've tried it a couple times. There's been some that I got pretty close. I have closed some of them, but I think the thing is, is like, for me, the rim of the pot, like I like when it holds the tension of the pot, right? You'll see like a lot of the like old school potters when they make these giant pots, they'll cut the rim with a needle tool and the whole piece will fall apart. It's all being held together by the rim. And so I, I really like the idea of the rim being this like thing that unifies the thing that frames the interior, that swirl. I don't think you got to see any of those, maybe not, but hold on, I'll go over. All right, camera C. So if you come over here, you can see my little swarm of them right now. So you can see in some of them, right? Like, let's see. Yeah, you can see like a bunch of them. Like, I like this rim almost acting as like a framing device for this spiral that's happening on the interior there to my hand. And there I am, I'm pushing it right against the palm, right? And so we hear right on the bottom. So we can rip it a little bit. Let's see, we're testing the thickness here. Okay. Catch the, catch the little thing, right? Isn't that kind of cool? I thought that was neat. I don't know, when, it's, when the clay's not hard, you can do that and it looks freaking crazy. You can bend it all the way out to here. I think I have a really cool video of me doing that, but it's not in my goaded series of commercials, so. And here we are, we're opening up this clay. Jarvis, camera C. There we go, so you can see, just making a little two divots, right? That's our pond, and our pond, you know, little tadpoles in there, a little water, right? I feel like the salt guy, you know, the guy who's like putting salt down his elbow? That's what it makes me feel like whenever I do that. And now we can push our thumbs down in, right? And then we're here, we're gonna whip out our freaking Captain Hook, you know, claw, and we're trying to push our fingers towards that bottom center and get our, our thickness gauged there, right? And if I'm also feeling the clay, I'm feeling that there's some hard parts that I gotta cut through. And so this isn't gonna be a perfect centered thing. You can already see how much it's kicked off, but watch how I sort of address this, right? So here we go, fingers on this bottom edge, and I'm here I am, I'm cutting through. I'm keeping my hand down, I'm keeping that bottom pressure. Taking out this little bump, very slowly, we're just banking it out right on top of our fingers here. And there we go, we got our bump situated. And like a slug going to find its next meal, right? Look how slow we're going on this hard clay here. Oh. Okay, we gotta get a little bit more water. We can stop right here. Nothing's stopping us from saying, hey, we need a little bit of a, a pit stop here to fuel up for the rest of the, the pole. And again, we're right up underneath of our fingers. And I always thought that this, to me, kind of reminds me of, like, carving irrigation for your corn farm or something. You know, like, you got to plow those, like, ravines to fill up with water so it can hydrate your, your crops better. In the same way, you got to position your hands, almost like a ravine, so then you, your fingers can actually, you know, uh, guide that clay. <sighs> Breathe. <sighs> Spider pole. And when the clay is hard, it's going to want to really collapse where it's thin there. But as our hands are slowly pulling this rim out, let's have some fun with it, right? Okay. Just skate our fingers along that rim there. So now you have a nice little tree. And so you can see, even see, like, here, camera C. Camera C. Right, look at how round this is, right? That's like perfectly... I could fit a jar or a lid here. I've always thought about doing that. I haven't done that yet. But I, I imagine just a nice lid that just, just hangs out in there, right? And what a surprise that would be to pull the lid off and see that interior. I think it'd be crazy. Some people said it looked like the Dune bucket from the, the movie Dune. That made me laugh so hard. Oh my gosh. All right. Camera, uh, camera B. Camera B. 
All right, here we go. So I'm going to have these, look at these things. So I have these two tendrils, right? And to me, look at them, they're coming around and they can interact with each other. That's what I think when, like, so many people when they're making pots, you're making a, you're making a vessel, right? Like, I'm not trying to make just vessels all day. Like, for me, like that right there, that interaction that happens on form, when, when, the, when we use these words like neck and like the foot of the pot or the belly of the pot, right? And we give it so much human qualities, but we never let it interact with itself, right? We never give it life. And so to me, I think that's really where I wanna like take pottery. And that's like my life goal, I think, is to discover like how I'm gonna find life on the wheel. All right, Knife Cat, what do you think, bro? You think you told me you thought it was the best one of the day. I was just, Knife Cat, you spoil me, man. All right, so if I'm looking at this pot here, guys, I'm saying this middle part, I think, is okay. You know, the middle part is okay. I'm, it's, I give it like a, like a, good, a good five. The top, I think that rim, if you can see it from the top and that vortex on the inside, I think light hits it in a good way, too. I'm going to give that like a... Like a five, that's a good five. But this bottom part, look at these tendrils that are happening up here, right? And they're coming in and they're meeting each other. That interaction, that's what I think helps it take itself out of, of pottery and into sculpture. Oh no. YouTube thinks I'm away. Dang it, YouTube. No, I'm not away. Just making pots, bro. Hold on. You guys can't really hear the music, but I promise I'm dancing like some good tunes. But anyway, this is the pots for today. Let's see. Whoa, I almost fell. This is the pots for today, guys. I'd like, uh, where's that? I like the one on the bottom. And actually the one in the middle, I, the, the drasticness of that twist right on this top part here, I think actually looks pretty nice. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I always do this thing at the end of my videos where I say, all the best and strong mentality.